no retina this one it's an AGFA an AGFA record 2 it tells me and the problem with this one is that the focus doesn't move at all it's absolutely locked up solid um, strongly suspect the dreaded AGFA green grease so first task remove the shutter from the camera and see if we can get the focus working again so I open the back of the camera with the folders like this it's often easiest to deal with them in the closed position to get that retaining ring loose once it's loose you can usually open it up again the tool I'm using has rounded points that's useful when you're dealing with something like this because uh, spade or spade type points on the end might cut through the bellows if you slip so it's always useful to be very cautious and using these round tips although they're not ideally shaped for the slots um, means that you're much less likely to damage the bellows you have to be very careful when you're doing this job apart from damaging the bellows you've also got to be very careful not to slip with the tool and scratch the rear lens group of course that's usually more of a problem while you're, start, you're trying to get the ring loose once it's loose like this uh, it's much easier to control the tool alright see how we go yep shutters loose and free from the body so I'll pop the body aside for the moment that'll get a bit of a check but there's not much to a body of a camera like that as long as the bellows are solid there's no loose joints in the struts it's generally just a case of uh, cleaning the film advance knob mechanism and the viewfinder and not much else besides let's have a look at this there's a bit of uh, marks on the rear lens group that's annoying probably clean away see if that'll come off with a friction tool yep the friction tool is always preferable for unscrewing a lens like that if you can of course you want to make sure that it's dished in some fashion so that it contacts the outside the metal outside rim not doesn't touch the glass and we should be able to lift off the shim how many shims have we got here? Two by the looks of it. Back to the front. So at the front, we know that the focus scale, the focus here seems to be absolutely frozen. No movement. I'll remove the focus scale ring here, temp possibly temporarily. Three small screws. So I may want to use this to grip the lens in order to unscrew it anyway so I might be well putting that back I want to get that ring off first it's not coming loose at all which suggests it might be glued in place with the dreaded egg for green grease we shall see not a sausage I'll slide a scalpel blade under that, see if that'll lift. Not a twitch. I'll remove those back those screws up even more they may be long they may actually be running into a socket running into holes in the uh, lens 
I don't expect it. That screw is absolutely loose. That's waiting to fall out. Take that out and put that on a, a way where I won't lose it. Same with its friend. So this focus scale ring is just glued in place. Yeah, it's coming loose. Well, here the lens is turn. The lens is turning. But I strongly suspect that it's not the front um, group rotating in the middle group. I think the middle group is actually rotating in the lens tube of the shutter itself. The focus scale ring is not coming off at all. There's that focus scale ring, that's off. No sign as to why that should have been stuck on there. Yes, the middle lens group is unscrewing from the body of the shutter. The front group is not unscrewing from the middle group, exactly as I suspected. We can put our shutter aside, and here is our problem. This piece should unscrew from here. I'll try that with a bit of solvent and see how it goes. First I'll try a little bit of naphtha. And hope that that soaks down, wicks down that thread and softens the uh, grease. Nothing. Alright, I'm going to warm this lot up with a hairdryer and see if that will help. Made absolutely no difference. I'm going to try another solvent. And I'm going to put the focus scale ring back in place on the front group. So I'll fit those three screws again. This will give me something to grip the front group by. Because the edge is quite uh, narrow. It was interesting that the uh, middle lens group started turning in the shutter. Had that happened to the owner, they would have thought that they quite probably thought that the focus was now working again, but in practice it wouldn't have been. Everything would have been very close to whatever distance this had originally been set before it froze, which is roughly infinity I would say because it appears to be wound in quite a long way. 
I want some way of holding the rear piece here. That's turning. That's coming loose. That's good. All right. That was a much easier fight than I expected. Now, we'll see if we can clean this up and get it turning freely. Let's solvent, let's try a bit of solvent on there. So, you've probably heard of Agfa's dreaded green grease before. You can see the colour of it here. It tends to set hard. It's like big... You'd think it wasn't grease, you'd think it was Loctite. Now the solvent I'm using in this case is CRC Electroclean, which is carbon. Oh, I think it's it's not carbon tetrachloride. It's carbon something else. It is trichloroethylene and tetrachloroethylene. Probably makes your children, make sure your children be born with fins instead of arms and legs. So what I've got to achieve is getting all traces of this green muck off the lens uh, and make sure the threads are completely clean. And then when it goes back together, that can be lubricated with something else. This um, focus scale ring is really, really keen to stick to the front group. No obvious reason why that should be. Take those screws out completely. I think it's probably just glued in there with that grease. Just start that then shutter and there. All right, pull that thing off. Okay. Let's see if that lens will start and, and run. Oh, it moves, but it's, it's quite stiff. Yeah, I've got a work that uh, solvent work that solvent in there I would say to cause that to loosen up Oh, it's just nasty stuff. It's very, very sticky. You can see how it's deep into the threads. I'll report back once I've got that clean. Well, I have that uh, lens 
moving smoothly now. It can certainly do with some lubrication on those threads. At the moment they are just brass on brass. But that um, moves smoothly and I think that'll be fine. There's no damage to the glass surfaces at all. Um, never really came in contact with them apart from the odd splash of dirty solvent. Uh, that's all cleaned away nicely with glass cleaner. So that lens problem is done. That's fixed. I can turn my attention to dealing with the shutter. So what we have here is a synchro compoil shutter. I think that's the size zero. I'll just rotate the locking screw and this should just rotate and bone it off. Probably with the speed ring it did. Here I can look at the insides of the shutter. And what do we have here? Well, this is the retard gear train. This is the delay action or self timer. And over here we have the flash sync module. This has uh, control for X and M sync. X sync is uh, for electronic flash. Basically, it means that the flash contacts make at the point where the shutter blades are fully open. M sync. Uh, provides a delay and basically it makes the flash contact so that the flash will fire before the shutter blades reach maximum opening and that's because flash bulbs take a measurable length of time to burn at peak brilliance and you need to give them that time to allow them to uh, come up to full brilliance before you make your exposure. So this looks fairly uh, conventional and I'll strip this down and clean it. I'm just checking the state of it now. The diaphragm is um, not overly stiff. There's some stiffness there. I'm not seeing any oil or contamination on the diaphragm blades. So I would imagine that the stiffness is friction between the settings lever and the case. Um, it's useful to have some friction there. You do not want your, your aperture setting moving too easily otherwise you might knock it while you're busy setting the focus or something and uh, you'd end up with some pretty random exposures. The shutter itself, that's fairly conventional. I'm more used to working on the next size down and 35mm cameras tend to have smaller shutters than this. But this certainly looks fairly conventional so I don't th think it'll cause me any great problems. What I'll do is, before I take it apart, I will take a series of photos so that I can be absolutely sure I know where all the springs fitted, how the levers worked in relation to each other, where the flash contact sat, things of that nature. It doesn't look... Um, it looks quite clean in here. I don't think there'll be much of a problem with the shutter. I would imagine that it'll, the blades are in very good condition. I think this will just clean up quite nicely. The biggest problem with this camera, of course, was the, uh, the front lens group, which could not be rotated. And that is now free of the dreaded green egg for grease. So, I just normally use a digital camera a small, not very exciting old digital camera um, to take photos of componentry that I'm taking apart if I'm not familiar with it. And set to macro, you can get in quite close, you can get some quite good photos, and of course, they won't cost you anything. The results are instantly available. And as long as they're good sharp photos, even if you can't see what you're looking for on the screen on the back of the digital camera, you can always upload them to your computer and view them on the great big screen and zoom in and you can see the details. I'll put the speed control ring back on the front of this and see if it actually functions or how well it functions. Flip this lever back up, that's the B lever. 
make sure that's right so this, this is quite stiff the setting ring is quite stiff shutter opens on B very well this should be about one second it's actually very good I would say that uh, most likely the shutter is in pretty good order as it stands it would probably be quite usable it's going to be serviced anyway so it can only be better than that um, the only obvious problem I feel here is that the control ring is quite stiff to move and most likely that's a bit of dried grease um, particularly around here and once that's cleaned and lubricated with a bit of molybdenum paste later it'll probably be fine these speed control or cam speed control cams or rings sometimes they are a bit tight on the lens tube and they're a bit stiff to rotate this section here that can be pushed inwards or pulled backwards slightly basically it, it clamps onto that tube it clip and so you can end up with quite a bit of friction if this is pushed in some distance it'll give you quite a bit of friction and uh, by the same token if the thing is very sloppy and very loose putting something in here and giving it a wee twist to pull this section in closer to provide a bit of friction against the lens tube will make the, uh, the action much more controlled however that's not what I need to do today so I'm going to take a few photos to make sure that in particular I know how all the control gear works over here because that's a little bit different than what I'd normally be working on and as I take components off I'll keep taking photos and so that I have a record of where everything went and where each of the springs fitted which side of which lever and around which post and so forth if there are screws there's two screws here for example that they look the same I'll be checking closely to make sure that they are identical in case one screw is shorter than the other and if one screw is shorter than the other there's probably a reason for it and I would need to make sure that the screws go back in the appropriate places I think this will all be fairly straightforward back later I'm confident that I've got as many pictures as I need in order to take this apart without uh, running into uh, a pile of fish hooks so let's start I'm going to start here make a note of that screw the spring holds back this little lever I've got photos of all this to help me reassemble it you should do the same if you're doing the same job this is spring loaded too let's get this lever off make note of where those springs go to I'll unhook that spring that's the B lever I think on this shutter lift that off in the lever unhook this spring lift off the shutter release lever I'll unhook the spring here from the main drive ring which is referred to in the instructions repair instructions as the main lever I'll lift that off the shutter completely I need to unscrew this screw here in this case it's a uh, I need a special screwdriver because it's got a post on the top of that screw um, So it's just got a slot either side of the post effectively but it may be a plain screw on the, the shutter you're dealing with so remove that there's a screw at this end I'm 
remove that. I think this cover should come off. This spring here is for the uh, flash sink lever. That's the detent for the flash sink lever. Lift off this top plate. It comes off as one piece. What's disturbed here? Well, there's our 500th of a second speed. This is the flash contact. Now, the flash contact sat like that with that um, post on the top of it. That's where the screw that ran through here runs right through that post. You can lift off that flash contact. Here's another spacer at this end. Again, that's just a post that that plate sat on. So far, so good. This lever here. Take great note of the angle that this thing sits at. You've got to make sure it goes back in the right in the same place. There's a bit of play there. Um, that's just backlash in the teeth of the gear, but that, it must sit at that angle. So make, take great note of the angle that, that this piece sits at. Now I've got to unhook this spring from that post. I think it'll be difficult. It's a very short spring. It's quite strong. Let's see if I can get it off. Yeah, it did. Amazing. All right, I should be able to lift this arm out. This arm has its own spring on it. It's, it's got a separate little lever riveted to it, which is sprung loaded. So take note of that and take note of that spring. Be careful not to damage it. We can lift off this cam. The wheel on the bottom of that cam couples to this little pinion here which drives the uh, pawl. That's for the flash sink. The flash contact can come out of the case. It's held in with a single screw to the mechanism plate. It's just pushed down into the shutter case. It of wedges in at the edges. You'll see that when you get to it. That is pretty much it. Uh, I don't think I need to remove that pointer at the moment. That may cause me a problem when I go to reassemble things. So I'll take that off. That's the aperture pointer. I'm just going to take that off the lever. Well I would do if the screwdriver would go in the slot. We'll leave it there for the moment. So I'm going to split the shutter. The shutter case is held together with four screws from the back that pass through the case and into the mechanism plate. The screws are identical. Should be able to split this case apart now. All right, so I've lifted off the shutter case. Here's our mechanism plate, and you can see the blades. I'm taking note of where the first blade is fitted, in which case it's over here, near this thin piece of uh, the aluminium section. You can see that's the first blade, second blade, third blade, fourth blade, fifth blade. 
I'm looking at the state of the blades. Now the tip, the very tip of this blade is bent. It's bent up. It's bent up this way so that it'll slide easily over the um, blades below it, presumably. Um, so we'll lift off blade 5. I'll keep these in order. Blade 4. Blade 3. Blade 2. And blade 1. Now blade 1 is interesting too. It's got a, the tip on that is bent. It's bent the other way. It's bent down. So take note of that. So the mechanism plate's pretty stripped. What have we got to do? We can take off our lever here. This lever swings the blade actuating ring backwards and forwards. And the blade actuating ring, of course, as it rotates backwards and forwards, opens and closes the shutter blades. Take that off. There was no washer or shim or anything under there. Some shutters you may find a very fine thin round shim and that would be because the, in that particular shutter there was a little bit of play at that point and it was just to take up the plate. If there's no shim there, none's required. From this side, three screws hold the retainer to the mechanism plate. This one's a long screw, that's by the uh, self-timer. That's a short screw. And that's a short screw. So there's one long screw, two short screws, Take note of where the longer of the screws goes. In this case, it's by the um, self-timer or delay action. You can lift off the retainer and lift out the blade actuating ring. And that is as far as the shutter mechanism plate needs to be stripped. We can clean all this, get rid of all this old grease and stuff, and that can be done quite easily with uh, cotton buds and some solvent, typically naphtha. I'll use naphtha to flush the retard gear train and work the retard gear train in the solvent and do it repeatedly to make sure any grease or dust or things is washed out. Likewise, I'll do the same with the uh, self-timer. That's more of a problem. There's no handy lever to move this backwards and forwards so just roll that back very gently with a tip of a screwdriver or tweezers do not force anything do not damage those gears or it won't run smoothly the pallet here for the uh, flash sink that seems to work smoothly again I'll flush that with a bit of solvent for good measure the other parts will just get swabbed put these to one side so what have we got here? Well, this, I want to disassemble this, so the first thing I want to do is remove the setting lever from the back of the diaphragm. Now rotating the second le settings lever around exposes two screws through holes in the retainer. So I'm going to undo those two screws and I'm supporting them from below so I'm not bending anything up. That's one. That's the other. And the setting lever comes away. Just recover those two screws. Then we've got our retainer here. Now what I'm going to do is check At the fully open position, the blades are just pulled back from that inside edge. So that's fully open, the blades cannot be seen from that inside edge. Now I can see my 
point here and here where the screw goes through to, to the setting lever. Three screws hold this retainer plate in place. I'm checking that they're identical. On some of the smaller shutters at least, one of the screws is countersunk. And so you need to get it in the right position. Now those screws are identical, so that's, that's fine. If I'm going to lift this plate off, and this retainer plate here, the shutter blades run on this surface, the diaphragm blades run against that surface, the surface that the shutter blades run against is distinguished by having five little detents in it, or recesses. The blade, the side that goes against the diaphragm blades is dead smooth. Here are, are our blades. I'll tip those out. Pop that back in the case. The blades. They have a little rivet that forms a pivot at each end. It's closest to the corner at one end and it's a little bit in from the corner at the other end. That's important. When you reassemble this, they've all got to go in correctly. So make a note that they are not symmetrical. They're not the same from one end to the other. And here we have the moving plate that swings backwards and forwards as you move the aperture setting lever and that drags the blades around their fixed contact and so pulls the, the circle down small, smaller or opens it back up. So all of these components just need to be swabbed with uh, naphtha on a cotton bud to make sure there's no dust and dirt and uh, most importantly any grease or oil in there we want it out. And that is the shutter stripped down. So that's it really, that's waiting now for me to clean it and I'll clean all these components up and then reassemble it. But first, a cup of coffee.